Driver! Start your engine! Field addresses itself to the starting line. And the Coca-Cola 600 is underway. Kyle Larson and Chase Elliott took off in one and two, but Stenhouse comes pounding back to battle for left. The yellow dot is the car that we're riding with. The white dot is the race leader. Probably nobody has missed practice more than Kyle Busch. We'll see if today he can take advantage of that 50-minute session on Friday to have his car dialed in Ooh. for 600 miles. The big slide job there from Blaney. He had to lift out of the gas, and now they both got around. Look at Kyle Busch thread the needle right there, Jeff. I'm telling you. That was a good move. I like that. Can that you was, tell? <laughs> <laughs> I think Kyle Busch liked it as much as you did. Here's another look at it. Well, these two have been battling it out. You see Ryan Blaney trying to side draft, get ahead of the 42, which he does a good job of, but the front end, I think, took off on him. He went up the racetrack. Had to bail out of the gas, and it opened this opportunity up. 42. How about that? He was going to have the help from 18. Nah, nah. He used it, side drafted off of him. Way he goes. There you go. So, what did Ryan Blaney and company have to say about that? If you don't realize it's a 600 mile race. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think he's referencing Kyle Busch because how close he was to that, you know, to, to that front fender as he made that move. Grinded my front tires off too much. I'm not sure why. The left front's not helpful. The right front, the upper of the wheel too much. Yep, simple. The right front's just feel worse every lap. You know, you depend so much. You, as a driver, I always really went off the right front, the feel that I would have, the grip that I would have in that right front. That would just give me the sensation of, of what I could do to tell the team how to make my car. Oh, you saw right there for uh, Mark Trex Jr. how that car grabbed with the right front and really rotated quickly through the bumps at three and four. So they're going to have to try to figure that out. I don't know, maybe, maybe some air pressure adjustments that they can do on the next stop. Green and white checkered flag is out to signal the end of stage one. Kyle Larson picks up his seventh stage win of the year. Most of all drivers, championship points paid to the first 10 drivers at the end of each stage. The bundle of joy fund, just a, such a special cause for Kyle and Samantha. Whoa, Bull. Here we go. Right there. Boy, I think Kyle Larson thought Chase Elliott was going to try to go to the inside, but he's so able I. to get to the outside <laughs> instead. We have a new leader. I told you that car was coming. First time that the defending NASCAR Cup champion has led today. Hey, I, I hate to say this and go back to some stats, but that might have been the best thing that happened to Kyle Larson because anytime he's led more than 200 laps in a race, he's never gone to victory lane. There's only one you need to lead. That's the last one. Here's the hammer. Just pound that nail, will you? <laughs> oh, it, it, that's a tough one, but but true. However, coming into this race, Kyle Larson had three seconds in a row and won the pole. Last time that happened, he won the race. But Chase Elliott is on the move and is your new leader. 296. Tires certainly down, but. And Ryan Newman running 12 just pancaked that car. Towards the end of this run. Ooh. Oh, you can see right there. Oh, Sparks. I just gave up. That right, right front, front tire. Right there at the end of the run. Be interesting to see what happens here, by the way. Into what, this. What, what would I was. What was interesting is that big run that he had on the 22 and the four. Well, so this is uh, this is probably going to end this stage under caution. 
All right, coming to the Trilogy front stretch for this restart. 94 laps to go at the line. Big jump for Kyle Busch on the outside right there. Huge restart by Kyle Busch. Oh, Brad Kay yeah. backing up in the middle. Reddick, Kozlowski, and Blaney staying out on the racetrack. Incredible battle going on right here, guys. 24 of William Byron. We saw oh, it. Look oh. out. Man, these slower Man, cars are really costing a lot of these guys. Here comes Chase Elliott into this. So William Byron was already on the track. He's short pitted, right? And he had a run, got to the outside of the 18, went three wide through three and four through traffic. That was extremely close. And now Chase Elliott able to make that move on William Byron. Man, these slower cars, I, I just wish there was something more that they could do. There's a heck of a race going on here. Well, that those, wasn't just a little bit slower either. That, like but they they're right, mile an hour right in that preferred lane. Here comes Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott coming back after Kyle Busch for fifth place. Wow, huge move right there. Well, that nine is... He looks nervous, Jeff. <laughs> well, he, he's just been around too long. He knows. He ain't the only it one that's nervous. It, it ain't over. This car right here is nervous. Do not let anything happen. Clint, he looks like Richard Childress all those years on the day of the Daytona 500, waiting to see if Earnhardt could finally win it. And in 1998, he did after losing it every way possible. Rick Hendrick has first, second, fourth, and fifth at the white flag. One lap to go, sponsored by Credit One Bank. Kyle Larson trying for his first NASCAR win in a race longer than 400 miles. And he's going to pick NASCAR's longest night to do it. And what a weird situation to get it done, right? With those three second places back in 2017, a pole and then go ahead and win the race. Going to do it again right here, 2021. Kyle Larson wins the Coca-Cola 600. Rick Hendrick, career win 269. Twenty-eight-year-old from Elk Grove, California, scores his eighth career. Well, Kyle Larson said yesterday, "I just haven't been very good at the Coke 600." And your crew chief told me, "We're going to change that tonight." And boy, did you! You swept tonight. What is the emotion, the feeling right now, Kyle? Not only to win the Coke 600, but to close it out, dominate a race, and get it done. Yeah, it feels good. Uh, it was not easy. I, I felt like I had to fight off William and Chase a lot um it kind of worked out there that last run the 43 had to pit and pulled out in front of me and i just towed with him for a while and stretched my lead out and uh we had a we had a good car there that last run so um awesome feels great to to be the guy to help mr h break that record finally and um just what a i mean, this is awesome we haven't we haven't seen this many fans in forever so um just thanks all you guys for coming out Hope we put on a good show. Um, thanks to Metro, che Metro Tech, Chevrolet, HendrickCars.com, everybody who uh, who allows me to drive this five car. And thanks to my five team too. They were they were great tonight. My pit crew did awesome. Um, we had awesome pit stops, especially on the green flag stops too. So that really allowed us to to get the win tonight. Kyle, this year you kick it off with a brand new team, a brand new organization for you. We're halfway through the season. You already have two wins. What is it like? How can you describe what this team is doing right now and what Mr. H has? <laughs> it's uh, I remember, you know, when I when I got to talk into like Ricky Stenhouse last year, I was like, oh, I think I'm going to end up in the five or the Hendrick cars. And he was like, you're going to do really, really good in that thing. And I was like, oh, I don't know. But. It's been it's been better than I could have ever imagined for us to lead as many laps as we've had this year, contend for as many wins as we have, uh, and now to get our second win, a crown jewel event too. It, it feels great. So, um, just very lucky to that Mr. H was able to put a deal for me, and um, it's just awesome. I'm I'm living a dream for sure.
Kyle Larson wins the Coca-Cola 600.